Yeah. Well, since attorney's here, we'll stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for another beautiful wet day. <laughs> Be with all these people that are represented here and their families. Get us home safe tonight. Uh, help the uh, council make the best decision for the city. Be with all our first responders, Lord, and our uh, military. Ask all these things to be pressed on the night. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lamar Cut, Nelson. Since the mayor is not here for the report, I'll defer it to the mayor pro tem. Uh, what is the status of the intergovernmental agreement between Nelson and the two counties? Exactly whose desk it's hung up on. The chairman knows about it as well, also. No. The commissioner said he died, but him and the chair had approved that he's going through the attorney right now. Um, the last time I talked to him, he had already discussed it with the chair, and uh, they was going to be willing to help us out. Okay. So. What is our expectations? Will we know anything this time next month? Yeah, I'm hoping. Sure. Uh, sure, yes. Is anybody going to follow up? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, down in section eight uh, concerning street signs, there's uh, just an example of probably how we don't really keep up with the status of the signs in the city. There's a sign right at the entrance to Laurel Lake Subdivision coming up from the south that's sitting like this, 60 degree angle. Is that where the truck run off in? 
Who knows? It's been that way for months, <coughs> maybe years. But I would think we'd have some kind of <coughs> periodic maintenance plan where somebody would go go around and look for stuff. We actually just did that. Just made a spreadsheet of a list of all the signs, what streets they're on, which ones need to be replaced. And had them go through and make a list of the ones that were in good condition, ones that need to be cleaned, had them clean them if they were then viable or if they needed to be replaced. Let's see, did you say you were making a list? I, you, this, you I, have, a, I have a spreadsheet and then I can go print out. And there's a list in here of the ones that need to be replaced. Is that something that you think would rise to the occasion to be reported back to the people <coughs> rather than just nobody knowing? I can give you a copy. I want to put a copy of it online. Because, okay. I mean, we had John do it, and then I went around, because it's real easy to miss them, because I caught a couple, you know, so then there may even still be a couple that haven't been caught. Right. But we're trying. Okay. Let's see. Uh, section 8, discuss nature trail repairs and upkeep. <clears throat> Isn't that something that just should be you know, routine matter of somebody maintaining that? It is, but you need to know what type of product. The product we bought last year was called Hill Hunter. So it's supposed to stay in place better. This other stuff that came in with it were really big chunks. Right. And we were having complaints from people that, you know, you can't jog on that. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a couple areas that keep washing out that either needs to have a drain installed or we need to put gravel in that area. Just we're having everybody on the same page and sending the guys out to put band-aids on things and we keep replacing yes. it. I'm sure you'll be discussing this in depth, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to put in my two cents worth that uh, it should, I feel the trail should be, you know, maintained, somebody that's in charge of mm -hmm. doing it. And I agree. And keeping it going. Thank you for getting the lines on the highway that I <coughs> brought up a, couple, a few months ago. Now I have another assignment. <laughs> um, there is a huge indention slash pothole up by the stairway company on the right hand side of the road as you go south. You can get a, an idea of how good your uh, suspension is in your car when you go over there. And I know big trucks go out through there. So if you don't have that in your uh, um, immediate plans for taking care of road problems, I would suggest that any or all of you go by and take a look at that. Down on Rock Quarry or? Yeah, right. When you go in <coughs> south, just about the time you're beginning to pass stairway company on your right. Yep. There's like a, a hopper there that <coughs> holds shavings, I guess, or something. Yeah. Anyhow, there's a big invention down through the concrete. I mean, it's not down to the dirt yet, but it's it's a huge depression okay. in the pavement. Yeah, it's cheaper to keep it at a price. It's kind of like doing stuff anyway to give a better price to go and touch up. And that's all I have today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> uh, Mike Ball, Habersham Way. Biggest concerns, these are big and not as questions about these speed bumps. What's the status on these before I ask any more questions? Well, we plan on discussing it. See if, how many of them we can take up. Mm -hmm. There's some of them we can take up now, but since traffic slowed down a little bit. Okay. Um, well, I guess y'all all decided to put these down. What are the stipulations? Were, were these looked into, or is this just a homeowner said, if people going fast down the road, I'm worried about my kids, we just went out and bought some speed bumps and put them on? No, we had complaints. Because I spent probably 15, 20 minutes before I came here and did a little bit of research. Yeah. Uh, and the little bit I found is, what y'all what, what know is, lack of words, legal, but the speed bumps, 
that uh, there should be speed halts. Speed bumps are not typically used for prior or public roads. Speed bumps are used for private roads and driveways, parking lots. Uh, speed limit is 25. You cannot hit those at 25 miles an hour. So, uh, and also concerned with emergency vehicles. How, how are fire trucks, ambulances? You know, we're we're so concerned every year that we bring out our maintenance guy to brush with a little bit of ice and snow off the streets. And how do we clean the streets? How do we allow the emergency vehicles to get there with these speed bumps there? You know, but like I said, what I read, they're not they're not legal. Yeah. But you think I, I think we went for you know, you know mm -hmm. rash of judgment and just do it out there without. I'm aware of no Georgia law that <coughs> indicates what I mean. There are recommendations and all kinds on traffic devices. Yeah. But there's nothing that prevents you from putting speed bumps on the road. Is there any way we can put them just at the stop signs? Totally up to you. Well, that's yeah. usually located at 30 miles an hour chasing somebody or a fire truck or an ambulance. Yeah. I mean, that's something that's going to be left permanently. I think it needs to be the speed hump. These were done more just as a temporary. Speed hump slow you down to 15, 20 miles an hour. Anything more than that, then you do damage to your vehicle. These right here, if you hit 15, 10, we came here tonight, you know, 10 miles is. Yeah, we're like it, it's, it's comfortable. Anything over that is just, and it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, I go through four of them in the morning and in the night. And it's, you know, I've been here for 19 years and never had a problem. You know, we get one or two people come in. We had a problem years ago, came up here, talked, they put a sign <coughs> on the kids at play, never had an issue again. Yeah. So if, if we must maintain them and keep them there, um, I guess we can wait. I can come back next month, but I have a whole list of streets that I think we need to put them on as well. Because as I ride my bike and, and, and drive through town, I see speeding on every street in town. So if we do one, two or three streets, let's do one off. Let's, let's all enjoy the fun of everybody in speed bumps. That's all I'm going to say. So what's our, our plan in the future? What are we doing? Let's, I mean, next month are we going to vote on this or? We're supposed to vote tonight to pull up and get a bit of them. And that's why I mean it's on the agenda for tonight. But it, since there's a council vote to put them down, it needs to be a council vote to pick them up. This have two questions. Call me all had her share. You stated that traffic had slowed down. Why? Because they haven't stopped for and crossed them. No, I mean, I'm saying traffic has slowed down through that? The speed. Just through that one area, correct? Well, all around town. Okay. Well, where there's a speed bump, you know, you got to slow down and cross them. The people that live across the street from have some big nose. People slowing down, but we also have complaints from people that live there, and now they're going into the yards to try to go around them. Correct. So you can't. It's a can't win situation. Well, yeah, we can do the speed humps. Mm -hmm. um, also, so we pay the city guys to go up there and clean up the mud. That people go around the speed bumps and track on the road. They'll go up and sweep it up sometimes. I mean, the speed bumps aren't put down as a permanent matter. It's not something that's going to be left there. It's more just to get somebody's attention and slow down. Mm -hmm. That wasn't ever meant to be permanent. And one that's got me really puzzled is why put a speed bump at a stop sign? Because they're wrong. Because they don't know by stop. <laughs> they weren't even tapping the brakes mm -hmm. coming through. And then something else has got to be done. I mean, I mean, well, first off, they've got to be 100 feet from a stop sign, so you can't put them right out of a stop sign. So, no, I was just curious to how those were. Excuse me. Thanks for your help, Bill. Anybody else?
to make a motion to approve minutes from February 30th. Second. All in favor? Mr. Salmon, did you get to talk now? <laughs> February. We have 11 calls. Um, kind of way I want to break this down. We had we responded to three separate domestics on Church Street, but they were all interrelated. Um, one of them was technically on March 1st, so it's not totaled up in here. Um, and our rest was made on the 1st in, in those. Um, we went to H&H Hollers down here, just inside the city. They had a terminated employee that finally brought his truck back from California. They wanted us to be there. But he didn't bring everything back, so we ended up having to go back a second time with that. We helped out uh, Pickens County with a call on Blue Ridge Avenue. That, um, we actually beat them there, I think, that, on that one. And then we transported one for them that had a warrant out of Cherokee County. And then we had the accident at, at the big entrance of Laurel Lake, but there were no injuries on that. And then, so talking about speed, um, you know, last month we talked about putting the speed boxes out. Mm -hmm. But we told you we can only put ours on the Cherokee County streets. Right. Uh, so we put one out on Old Nelson, and uh, our traffic enforcement is taking it up. And they'll download it, and they'll print out and give me the data, and when I get it, <clears throat> I'll forward it to y'all. Let you know what's going on with that. I did notice, you know, when it, you know, when it would come up, you know, people were slowing down. See, it's like, wait, what's, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, did, they did slow down on that. Um, that, was, that was pretty much it. Had a couple of alarm calls and stuff like that. But then that was just a good month of February, except it was wet. Any, any questions or any problems? No, thank you for putting that sign up. Yeah. I think that will have a lot. We were going to put one up on, on Kennesaw Avenue coming in, but there's, it was just, by the time you get, down there, you're already picking it down yet. Unfortunately, we can't put, like I said, we can't put them on the, the pickings, and we have to keep them on the charity side. So. Now, who's put them on up here close to mine? I don't know. Did y'all only have one out? As far as I know, there's a one There was another one on the same street on the picking side. Yeah, it flushes. Yeah, because it looked like the same thing. I don't know if, it, I don't know if that was ours or pickings, guys. I think it's pickings.
Miranda, you ready to talk? I am always ready to talk. Well, come on with your for everybody to see. I'm going to get your princess card. Um, okay, so let's go over the bank balances right now. Um, the general fund, as of the end of February, was $651,539. Um, cash reserve was $165,487. Lost two thousand and eight, um, three hundred ninety one dollars. We need to figure out what to do with that. Yeah, because it keeps going inactive. And the printout that I have here yeah. is from Thursday, so mm -hmm. we're trying to get. So any smaller project that we have or anything mm -hmm. that, uh, that we need to do, that's yeah. road signs. No, that's a maintenance issue. No. <laughs> um, Squaws mm -hmm. three is one hundred and three thousand four hundred and twenty two dollars. Um, SWAS 2, which is the Pickens, is $451,848. SWAS 4, which is Cherokee, the, the older one, um, $664,247. And then SWAS 5, Cherokee, the new SWAS, is $240,006. Um, okay, so another thing I would like to review too. Uh, April meeting, I will be submitting to you guys a budget calendar for this upcoming budget adoption um, for fiscal year 2021. Um, with that being said, in April, can we go ahead and plan to have a work session in play because we need to discuss budgets so we know what we're doing going forward before I get the draft together. Um, so if you would make a note of that. I'm trying to do, I think the 16th of the Thursday. And then the 17th is the Friday, which is when we're starting to dumpster days. Okay. Does that work for you, 10 of the April 16th? So it'd be the week after. Right. Yeah. You can kind of know that it's in April, April meeting. April 16th. I think so. The, the dumpster days start on the Friday, which is the 17th. Mm -hmm. And we have potentially. All right, so in regards to the budget, as far as we're at right now, uh, which would be 58% or less. Um, David, you pointed out earlier about the contingency line item being over. We are um, I was kind of waiting until April to do a budget amendment so we would be more in line where we we're supposed to be. And Because once you do those amendments, you, if you do them, it's easier to do the whole thing as a whole. Um, but our revenues are actually exceeding. We're coming in at 9% 9, 9 already over what we anticipated um, for this year, mainly due to the, um, the insurance premium tax from the state. Um, it came in at 100000 this year instead of what we budgeted at eighty seven, which was pretty much what was last year. So um, that's a good thing. But we'll be able to use that money whenever we're going to offset for the contingency line item um, because those are things that we had approved to do after the budget was approved this year. So um, that's a good thing. We're in a good good standing with, with the budget so far. Um, most all of it is a departmental level, which should be 58% or less. Um, we're running pretty good on all of that. All of these are under except... Um, the museum miscellaneous, which is 67%, and then the city council expenditures, um, which everybody's had good training. So once you do that, then um, there's no more, really. That's it. And other than that, that's pretty much all I have. The electricity for parks and rec is on. Yeah, to you, and we had them come out. A manifold come out and look, and it had to be with the heaters that are in the bathroom yeah. kicking on. So, we have maintenance guys turning it down some, and we just keep it around 50. And there's not thermostats, so you have to just kind of play with it. But it should, because the power for that was higher than the power for everything else in the city of mine. Well, not street lights, but it was like 250 for the bathroom. So but even in that, we'll be able to transfer within that, in that department that. Yeah, there's we have not the repairs and maintenance, and we've still got side improvements. We've got we can do a transfer in there, and it'll be fine. Yeah, the next one should be last. Yeah. 
We're about to start rocking and rolling with our budget adoption, budget process, and capital. We need to be thinking about SWAS and our capital budget, too, as well as our general budget. Is the mayor able, able to have that meet in Cherokee County? Well, we're going to meet with uh, Jerry Cooper next week. I'm not sure. I know she said she one day next week. Right. It was just the, like, the initial one to get it set up to yeah. see who to meet with before they actually go in and do the meetings yeah. for that stuff. It's yeah. kind of like there's a precursor thing from the Yeah, then we're going to meet with uh, okay. the engineer that's going to be looking after it. And we'll do them right in this. I'll make the engineer. coming in from Jordan Road, or not Jordan Road, Old Nelson Road, the guy said it was in pretty bad shape. From the websites I found that are here, and I don't know if Cherokee can remake the current one, they don't offer that design pattern anymore. Uh, so the option is, if Cherokee can replace the ones we have, then that's fine. Otherwise, we actually have seven Welcome to Nelson signs coming in from different directions. So do we replace the two that need to be replaced and leave the old ones being different designs, or do we go ahead and just change everything over since we have a new seal, new logos, and just make it a one-time thing. If you're buying one sign, it's a lot more than it is to buy in bulk. So, just something to kind of think about. There were a couple signs too. There's one that's a no passing when sellable line is right of center line um, that you can't find. It has to be made. So then you get into the custom thing, which some of them weren't terrible, but some of them were a little ridiculous. Um, 
John went down and checked the sizes of some of them. Some of them, the sizes, like the ones here, that has WS by it, the sizes that are offered are not the sizes that we currently have, which aren't going to make a difference with a lot of things, but with the Chevron areas down there, I think there's a total of six of them, if I'm remembering correctly, and one in the middle is gone. So right now, the ones that you can find are about 10 inches smaller than the current ones that are out there. And again, it might be something that the county can do, but, you know, it's not a big deal. But I just wanted the thoughts, especially since it's a good bit over the threshold. And some of these places didn't even offer some of the signs. They just weren't available at all. And then with the ones that we have range from 1,500 up to a little over 3,000. The last two columns, were they had a lot of them that weren't even available. A kind of signs that's going to be normally ordered from. Um, but again, hopefully Cherokee's come out to be a better price. But since it's over that threshold, we just need to decide how to proceed. Or do you want to just set it like it were if we get it from Cherokee under X amount of money? We've got a person who also want our shipping for coming from Cherokee, so some guys that we get them. So it's 3,079 total for all of them you need? That, that was the ones under road traffic signs, and they didn't offer some of them. Like the ones there that don't have them in there, they didn't offer them. Um, so I mean, their prices were that high, even with some of the ones that we can't couldn't get. And same thing with the safety sign. The ones that are in a one they didn't offer them. So a condo signs are the ones we normally order from, and they have almost everything that we would need. But some of the sizes weren't the same as the ones that we currently have. And it's 27 left and 73. Yeah. And that's for everything you need except. That was for everything except the no passing one solid line. Is right the center line. Well, actually, no, that's there because it was under it's eighty-one dollars because it was customized. And that's something like that sign. Ricky said is actually on a wood pole. He doesn't know how long it's been there, but it, I don't know if it's one that still needs to be there or if it's one that. I'm not sure. Brad, can this be paid for out of the cloth? No, she doesn't have that. I think if you're buying signs, couldn't you? I mean, if, if you're repairing them, no. If you're purchasing, you can't. <coughs> it's kind of a nifty thing. We've done it in the past. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of things. I mean, you know. Is it when they check the auditor? Huh? I when they check the auditor? I would just ask. I would just cover. Yeah. Just, just don't want to do it and then I come back and buy this. But, I mean, if you're buying a bulk, I think it. It's one thing, like you're buying a sign here or there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why, I, and I really don't think we're going to pay quite a bit of money. But, and it's kind of like the Welcome to Nelson signs. It's kind of like we're going to sink the money into it, then we'll not just have new ones done, then have the new seal, the new, and you can have if you want something on there other than the Claudia Kins thing, you have a chance to put something in there, you know? So, any thoughts? You're waiting for pricing, or you want to just set a cap on it as long as we can get it for under this amount of money and we can see where you can put this loss. Is that 2711? Is that seven of the uh, two weeks? Yeah, that's with seven if they're the 16130. And that's still a very plain Jane sign. If they're 48 by 36, so they're big signs, but that was still <coughs> a two time with like the black and white letter or green and white letters kind of thing. You want to see what Cherokee can do and come look and compare it the next month? We can do that, and that's what I was saying. If you want to wait a month to do it again, or if you want to put a cap on it, like if we can get it for under this price, yeah. then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, we wait and then bring it back out here again with more pricing. So, y'all talk. Mm -hmm. what they see what can do what Cherokee yeah. If I can do it cheaper, I don't see no problem with that. I'm going to do the same quality of sign. Mm -hmm. I may just go down and read Because they said the guy that's at the, the sign bar and thing doesn't have a phone with them. They just send the messages. So I'm just showing that.
But I'm pretty sure there's a sign that says that there's no sure there And is. they get some of the rules yeah. signed. But, but there might, might be worth looking at getting a Maybe separate so sign. Yeah. I'll put more sign list. I seen a motorcycle coming out of one day, but that's been a while back. One more the speed bumps. Yeah, one of the biggest speed all of them. All of them. I'm fine with it. Let's move them all. Make a motion we remove all of them and look into the speed humps and do a little research on where they would best be used. Yeah, see, we can do that when we repave the streets, you know, with, with asphalt. At least make at least three foot flat. Something that when you slow down, yeah. it's not going to yeah. destroy your vehicle. Yeah. 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 One of the ladies that's here last month, you know, she said she drove a mini Cooper. Mm -hmm. yeah. She couldn't get over them mm -hmm. in her car. Mm -hmm. no, no. I second your motion to move them all. We got a motion and second. All in favor. Okay, discuss and vote on the district security camera about the grades. Can I just say that? All in all Okay, well, you purchased two cameras to install at the new park. Uh, they came out, looked at our stuff, gave us an estimate, get it done. Came out, put the cameras in, came in the next day to hook it all up. And he goes, oh, you already have 15 cameras, now you have 17, and you only have capacity for 16. I tried to ask them, and they won't put this to that. But anyway, so we now have access to 16 out of the 17. He said that the next step up from that was to add a, it's called an NDR, which I'm not sure what that is. Um, it's $999 that it will allow us the capacity to add 16 more cameras going forward. We mm -hmm. add 16 more. Yes, on that one. And the hard the um, storage capacity thing, it'll come with some. So I think we were at four, and we added, <coughs> yeah, we were at eight, we added four, and then each one of those things, I guess, come with four. So it would put us up to 16. I checked the, the VF system out the other day, and uh, we got a couple that's not being utilized over at the, where the Rebecca Lodge is in the building. Yeah, there's three, I think, on that building. Yeah, we, I mean, instead of upgrading the system right now, I, I'd recommend we to take a couple off that building and, you know, put them somewhere where might be a little better used. Because both of the entrances of that building we've talked about, the walls are covered. Mm -hmm. So. Well, there has been stuff that has gone missing from that building. We don't know when, but I know when we checked for stuff, not Christmas a couple months ago, Christmas last year, James and Sylvia and I went in, there were stacks of tables and all kinds of brand new chairs. We went in this year to go get some of them, and there's a lot of them aren't there anymore. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind, too. But again, those cameras aren't going to hit, because I think it was the lower doors that might have been entered. The one on the upper, it hits the park. No. Yeah, one of them, like if you're looking at the building, there's one that goes out and hits the intersection, like um, coming into town. One hits, like going up towards the railroad tracks, and then one hits directly across at the park. At the park yeah. So it's just hitting different aspects of town. Which when we've gone back to look, we actually do anything with a park area, um, cars that are coming together, <coughs> whatever. The, all of those cameras end up getting checked. The one hitting, I guess, going towards the intersection leaving town will probably be less so than the other two. But at some point, we do need to put some city hall facing the other direction. Mm -hmm. We currently have one yeah, hitting that. Really have to park one we yeah. voted also to put a generator in, which I think that was before my time. It hasn't been done, but if, at some point, if we do that, we need to have something that hits that. And we've also mm -hmm. had reports of people coming up in the park and do lawn and doing weird things at night with knives that um, our cameras don't catch because they're doing it there instead of in front of the door. Can we have him move one off of the, this building down here? You want to look at them so you can think could be as much as the wolf shining up this way. But um, the half court on Pickens, mm -hmm. it, the, the camera they have there shows the whole court in the parking lot. I mean, we voted to put two, but I don't really see a need for the second one. 
Well, right now, I'm not sure where the second one will go right now. And when the part's done, there yeah. might be more reason to have it there. Because right now, from what I see, the one around right here where you're talking about. If it, I wonder if there's not a way to put it on the corner so it kind of yeah. hits everything. And take one off the building. I mean, we could swap it pretty much, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and it keep us from having to upgrade the, the DVR or whatever it is. NVR, which one of those initial things. Yeah, in the future, he needs to let us know the total cost before. before well, I think, well, it's, normally he would come out and, and check it, and he sent the guy that works for him, so I don't know. You know, because like I read back through the emails, and it's like, I can see it, but it's kind of like if the guy that came in didn't check to see what capacity was. I can see how it would be an oversight, I guess, is what I'm doing, too. So I'm going to tell him to wait on that for now and check. And I'm, and I'm going to ask how much it's going to cost to kind of move them because he does yeah. a charge of every time he comes down here. We could move them one up there at the highest basketball court for sure because we sure don't need it up there right now. He didn't install the second one, did he? Yeah, they were both installed. Oh, they were both installed? Because he did the installation on a oh, Thursday right. yeah. to get all the, they were having problems with one of the, it's like the receptor things, the radio signals. So it took most of the day, and they came out on Friday, which is to the stuff here. Yeah. I, I like to fail on this evening when I walk around through the yeah. 
young. Well, I went the other day, but it wasn't raining. But it's one of the things when it gets wet is when it gets really bad. And there's I mean, some pictures in there. Yeah, we might have to get on a get on a schedule of in quarterly pressure washing or something like I that. I think so. But we need to see if they if there's a way they can get back there. We need to just buy another paint to just get it taken care of. And some of the benches back there. I went there and took pictures. Oh, okay, it wasn't raining last week. Um, the ones, I think it's on the third page that has that really bad area that's always bad. The top view. They're not doing the maintenance that they should do out there. I, I mean, uh, I walked through the today right after the rain and took my foot and kicked out a few places and drained mm -hmm. most of the day. Yeah. They didn't go out there every time it rains and check on it. Yeah, no, I agree. And that mulch out there, that's. Good. Yeah, but well, there's still a couple big. piles there, and we've had complaints that it's too big. We can kind of kick out whatever. So we can either buy new mulch, we could go with gravel. The guy at um, South States is usually the least expensive. I didn't just see the price sheet to get ideas. But he recommended, I think it was 87 gravel, is the one that he yeah, was talking out. about. Yeah. Because he said it's still angular, that it kind of can be retraction with us some. Um, and maybe an entire walking trail with gravel. I think we've got some good mulch. That's the right thing. They call the, it hill uh, butter because it's staying in place in the rain. Well, it's staying in place in <coughs> half a tree. And they're going to have to remove most of them big old trees before we put down any real mulch. Uh, does he not have any cypress mulch up there? By the way? He had, yeah, there were prices. He just sent me his price sheet that's on that. But he had just said, you know, if you're having, especially the areas that we're having consistent problems with, either put in a drain or you grab one of those areas. He said you can even do it where you park your gravel, park your mulch, just depending on what you've done. They have a mulch of pea gravel I'm breaking down at 625. Yeah, the pea gravel is the most expensive. Yeah, and the pressure running is 450. For 16 to 18 tons. You get that a lot cheaper. Get a ton of rolling. Yeah, well, he said some of the stuff you need to probably get from heaven yeah. um, and have them delivered and say it, it depends on what you're getting. If you're getting mulch, they're usually really expensive. Gravel, right, there's probably options that wouldn't cost as much. Yeah, this place down yeah. here, uh, East Turkey, you don't sell mulch, but a ton of mulch. Uh, on the right down here. Is it Cower? Yeah. They yeah. brought our stuff last time, but we, they went through them. To get whatever. I was just getting ideas just to see yeah. if we're doing mulch, if we're doing whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Some cypress mulch, then I should work on that instead of big old chunks. Yeah, and yeah, there's that mulch is portable. Those real saturated spots might need dug out and some gravel put in, I'll tell you. That's what he said. Right. That or install like, some, a small drain system that just kind of diverts the water underground and then you have to. Over it. Yeah, if they go through those shovel and hit them spots, they have a whole bunch. Just let that mm -hmm. water drain through after every rain. But we've had 20 something inches of rain. Yeah. Just a little. I didn't know it was all covered. But they was one spot that was pretty bad. Yeah, there's a shovel. Yeah, there's a shovel. 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 I think it can. Well, he loved it and then put something. Yeah, they have to let that put your onions in. And I don't know when that's going to. They did go through there and fix it where they can drain for the time being. Yeah. And then fix it after it dries out. But, uh, you could get a lot of mulch and let them put some more mulch on it. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to definitely get one mulch. But the filter stuff is not what we need to get. And they's uh, about a fourth of a load of the pressure on out there they can put on that driveway out from there. Put in potholes on it. Mm -hmm. It's already out there. Or so you can make the, the road that runs on the side. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that one that runs. The other yeah, getting back there.
software system. Miranda and I, they just have demo online so they can actually um, go through and make different modules for each item that you want. Um, they have one for building enforcement, they have one for code enforcement, they have one for um, maybe a, a business licenses. Just to track them so stuff goes out on time. You know, if you're, it's just kind of like, it's just a process, like kind of checking boxes. Like you can't move to the next step until this is done. It alerts you if something's expired, if something needs to be renewed, and kind of puts, like you can go in and find like one person in the city and everything, like if they have a building permit, they have trash or they have property taxes. It just kind of combines everything into one, like one area where you can go and find everything a little bit easier and you can track it and keep up with it. And the licensing fees, the one time of 305, and then it's 118 a year, which is less than, I mean, we just got the new invoice for the stuff that, they, that we currently have. It. I tried to take screenshots and they were going through and just showing the different things which were great when I first came up, but it's kind of like looking at the checks on the back of the bank statement. You can't really see what's what in here. But if you can print out a list of who has a permit, when it's expired, um, who has a business license, when it expired, if it's active or inactive, if it canceled it. It's just a, an organizational tool, I guess, to kind of dumb things down and make it easier to track things and keep up with them. I believe that, like, with a business license, um, that would be a really good way to increase our revenue. Yes. to be able to um, keep up with it, to be able to maintain and monitor it and send out late notices, just like she said. Um, right now we're using a spreadsheet. Um, so I'm almost positive that we would get a better outcome of that as far as our revenue if we mm -hmm. were to do this. Um, just like she said, we sat with a demo and it incorporates into the system so well and makes everything kind of talk. I think that it kind of would be really super beneficial. Um, if we say with the business, the uh, building permits and stuff, the same thing. It, you can build it and make it however you want it. You put your fees in there. Um, it would increase everything as far as revenue, um, efficiency, definitely. Um, well, it simplifies things too. And code enforcement, and I'm just saying, if, if, I don't know what, you know, what's going to happen going forward with these intergovernmental agreements, but um, it would simplify and make everything work to be more efficient by utilizing those modules. Yeah. I definitely think business licenses, if we don't do anything else, we should definitely do that because I think we're, we're losing some serious revenue on outside one code enforcement too, because you have one place where everything's entered in. And then if you need to assign it for somebody to go investigate it, you can see what who it was assigned to, if they agree with it or disagree with it. Yeah. It keeps up running law. Instead of it just being something on there where yeah. you put it in an address and pulls up whatever the letter was and you have to give dig through a file to find the complaint that goes with the letter. And it actually turns out a professional letter from the system. You put a template in there um, with code enforcement. So yeah. when you pull up that property or that parcel number or whatever address, when you put it in there, it's going to pull that. It's going to pull the tax records. It's going to pull the sanitation. If they have sanitation, it's going to pull the code enforcement. Um, it just simplifies. It makes everything right there extra kind of goes. So I have a big point. Sounds good to me. I want to wait to see if we get uh, something in place for Cherokee and Pickett County. I'm going to find mm -hmm. I did kind of look, well, I did look through some of that too, and I know I said something to chat about it, but there's, and again, it's just clarification in some of that, because whenever I was reading through it, I, I went to Cherokee County this week because we had stuff that was going out just to make sure they were diagnosed across the piece kind of thing. But they have like an impact fee now. If you put it in building house, you get hit with a $1,500 fee. And according to that MSA agreement, it says that the fees are, cannot be less than what the county charges. They're now requiring render drawings for projects turned in, whereas before you could kind of sketch it out as long as everything was the way it was. And I think Pickens still allows a lot of that, and they don't have the impact fees. So there were some big price discrepancies between the two counties and, and the requirements that Cherokee has versus the requirements that Pickens has. So it's just stuff to kind of keep in mind because I was initially under the impression they were going by our codes and ordinances, and I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. That's the way it says it reads in the uh, It does, but then if you read it 
it's like because I was doing the same thing, and then as I would reread it, it kind of it just appeared that that wasn't really the case. Well, that's something we need to find out for sure. Well, because the impact fees are huge. I know there's actually talk of possibility of annexing in the neighborhood. Those impact fees have been in place for 20 years in Cherokee County. I know, but Pickens doesn't have them. So if you live in the city, and you're not in the Cherokee County. That's something y'all have to do, I believe. But the what the what the agreement says is the fees could be lower than what the county charges. I don't think it would be an impact. They may have a problem. I've been asking you all this. No, we can look into it. Well, it's yeah, like if they need a neighborhood. I mean, they're more or less in our code. Right. Well, we don't have enough staffing for what needs to be done. We just don't have it. <coughs> Wait on that until we see what's going to happen with these agreements. Okay. I feel the same. Now, 
Could we? Is there any legal reasons we could end the anonymous reporting? Totally up to y'all. I wouldn't do that. Because mm -hmm. there's people that have legitimate complaints that are seriously worried about retaliation, and they will not say we, anything. Can you not keep the? Can we keep their information confidential? I asked that in one of the training sessions, so. and you can't yeah, legally black right. out names. From <laughs> Can't redact it. I asked that last year when we were because we were on the same. It's an open record when somebody submits. Now I verify it. Like if somebody comes in and says it, if you know we had one about a car. That's what I was curious about. If we could, if they could put the information down and we could see it, but it, you know, it would be confidential for. But it would be. An yeah, the person. That, that is the one thing somebody being complained about always wants to know. Yeah. And all they have to do is request that information, and we have to give it. To them. And people do come down for open record requests when they get a But they do do open record requests. Mm -hmm. That's what paper trail. Yeah. You have to give them anything that you well, want. Well, I think they might say that they allow for but I mean, we require it to be in writing. Our policy states it can be verbal. Yeah. I think the law states it can be. We do have a form. So I mean, like if they come in for an open record request, you got to have it in writing before somebody's complying, right? No. I mean, how do you do an open record request on the thing? You can only give them what you have. It's kind of like when you go through the training and they'll talk about, like, text messages. Like, I don't ever delete anything from my phone. I don't delete any emails that have whatever. So somebody comes in and requests it, they can have it. But anything that's already there, they can't delete. Right. Okay. So that's why it's important that they have the information that they have to exist. But there have been numerous people that have come in and made complaints, especially one of the more notorious people we've had to send stuff for that have legitimate complaints and legitimate concerns for retaliation because there has been some towards others because of that. But it's like at the same time, it's like you can't, there is verification. Like it's it's not one person saying something just to try to get, you know, make their neighbor angry or something. But the policy states that it can be verbal, and I'm sure that was the reason behind it. Mr. Uh, Chairman, can I ask a question? If the other yeah. members will allow me to speak. Yes. Yeah. Concerning complaints. I believe we have within the city a form to submit complaints. We do. Yeah. Right. We use it for anybody that wants to come in right. and submit it. And once those have been submitted, then they're subject to open records. Yes. Right. And I don't believe there's, you allow a complaint anonymous. Don't the complaint form have a place for a signature? It does if you use the complaint form. But it's right. like the policy, we brought this up a couple of months ago, it's the same question as popped up and in the policy it states that you can receive a verbal complaint. It's under code enforcement, like in the back of the policy book. Right. My recommendation would be that you use the complaint form as we have in the past and don't try to figure out how to cover stuff up. It's not but make it transparent so that if anybody has a problem, they can come back and read the form. I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying there has already been retaliation towards people. We've had tires slashed, we've had trash dumped in people's yards, we've had due to complaints that, that they've come that's to That's really not a valid uh, excuse for not following your own procedure. But our procedure states we can have a verbal complaint. Is that how it's in the back of our policy book? Well, anybody could make a complaint to any one of the city council people if they wanted to re remain anonymous. If that's the way, and I know, I know from having read some of the uh, uh, literature, some of our procedural forms, mm -hmm. it says one source of the complaints are the elected officials. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. But if you're going to say our policy within the city is you must submit your complaint on the city uh, uh, developed form. Yeah. Then do it across the board. Do it all the time. Don't just I know what you're saying. But what I'm saying how you want to either I agree make it transparent or not. But our policy states that you can do a verbal complaint. So well, I'm saying that it's like we are going by our rules because it's what it says. But yeah. if, if you're allowing this verbal complaint as, 
a way to cover it up so nobody can use the open records, that's inappropriate. But that's not covering it up. It's a matter of protecting someone's safety. Some of these are elderly people that come in and say something. And if they're worried about their safety because they've said something and their fear would keep them from coming in and saying, hey, this is going on, then how do you find out about it? I mean, this, this has legitimately come up recently where it is somebody that's elderly or somebody that comes in and they're like, hey, this is going on, and they will not put their name on a complaint form because there's already been retaliation towards others that have done so. Documented retaliation. So how do you tell that elderly person that their complaint isn't valid because they don't want to be retaliated against for saying something? I'm an elderly person, and I think I could handle that situation yeah, because I know how to dial 911. I'm just saying, that's what, I mean, our policy states that you can do it. There's not many that do it that way. But there have been a few that have come in. And I've had several people come in that will bring stuff up and they, they do not want their name on something. It's just kind of like, hey, you need to know this is going on. Well, I would say if they convince you of, as a member of the city, official member of the city, if they convince you verbally that you have a problem, uh, there is a problem that exists, then you could handle it directly without filling out the form, but I would think you would document it in some form. If somebody comes in with a complaint that you're going to handle within the city, you're going to have some kind of tracking system if somebody came back later and said there was a lawsuit. Well, you can start that, but it's still a matter of, and I guess I'm looking at it more when it's somebody that's elderly or when it's a, a single woman that lives alone. And, We've had tire slash. We've had blatant retaliation that if it's, I don't know. I mean, if that was my grandmother living up there, and I wouldn't want her afraid to come down here and say something because she didn't want to go out the next morning and have a tire slash. There's people walking up and down the street with baseball bats. I mean, it's kind of a, it's just there's a fine line there. I'm so at what point is there a complaint on that one? I'm thinking of the other side of the argument. I understand that side, but like, what? What I'm talking about, the anonymous complaints, is like, it keeps, it, the, the ordinance violations and codes and stuff can be used to target people they could if be. it's yeah. anonymous. And there's no... But that's why there's also, if there's something that's questionable that I'm not sure if it's, it's kind of like when I sent y'all the text, hey, we've got a complaint, somebody wants letters sent out, ever since we lose our garbage can at the street. Yeah, you can read through the, the the book and you could interpret it to mean you can't leave your hand there, but it does not specify you can't leave your hand there. Or if it's somebody that, the ones that have come in repeatedly continue to fill out the complaint forms. The ones I'm talking about that come in that are verbal are the ones that you rarely hear from. So if they're coming down and they get to the point they're saying something and it's a known issue in the area, then you know it's a valid complaint. If it's somebody coming and complaining about a you know, some junk car, and then we, I'll go check it. I'm not going to just send somebody a letter because somebody says they don't like their neighbor and they don't like the car they have sitting there in the yard. Kelsey, it wasn't a while back where you said that it had to be on paper, they had to sign it, and thought it and admitted to that the, that complaints had died down a lot because we have chronic complainers with nothing better to do. Well, there are some that have that. I know, and that's their hobby. That's their hobby, and that's their fun in life. And it just makes it trouble. But uh, we did think that that's it. Way. But in the policy book, it does state that you can take a verbal complaint. There's not been many that come in that do verbal. It's very few, and it is usually extenuating circumstances. Because most of the time, it's just to just to get a neighbor for a vengeance of some sort, and when it should even. I know what you're saying, but it's still, it's verified, and it's, I mean, there's some that come in, and it's kind of like, it's it's not valid, and I'm not going to send somebody a letter just to harass them about something that's, doesn't, that's not a big deal, or that we don't have a policy specifically like stated. I like the sign the paper. You got to cut to do it, sign the paper. So, if you're calling C-Man's to, to report a drug dealing, you want the drug dealers to find out if they want to go do an uh, open records request to know who you were reporting them? Call 911 for that. That's yeah. Well, so, 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 you can't get that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have criminal cases. Yeah. I mean, not currently. There's still retaliation that would border on that. That you know that's what it is, but you can't. You can't prove it, I guess is the best way to put it. 
I, I understand the protecting the people that's right and complying with it. The people that could potentially be targeted as the ones that need protected too. Oh, I that's, agree. With that's you. my argument on the thing. That's that's the only reason I brought it up. I know. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but it's again. The question is whether that person is really violating the code. If they're violating the code, they are violating the code, mm -hmm. and it has been checked. And if if it's the ones it's that I'm thinking that you're referring to, oh, I don't I don't know what you're referring to. I'm talking about several different. I know, but there are several that. If it's the ones that I think that you're talking about, there are things that I can tell you that I wouldn't say in here because I don't want it coming back on people. On either side. I don't want names brought up into that at all. That's all I had on that subject. Do you have anything else? Okay. I get a motion to move to executive session. Make a motion to move to executive session. Second. All in favor. Aye. 